podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none. You know my day walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go follow us, like us, share us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it. But you definitely got to check out our Patreon channel. We drop all our full-length interviews on there. So subscribe, check us out, even on our YouTube membership. For those who don't like all these clips that we be dropping, but you know, y'all don't have the long attention span, so y'all need the clips. But for those who do, y'all go subscribe, check us out. Taking our long, long, long interviews, but very exciting. Man, hey, man, listen, man, guys, make sure you do what she said. Y'all want to keep this show going? Y'all gotta listen, man. We we need you to listen and come on in. It, it, what you how, what you want? What you what is your goal? You know, you got all this uh, telling all this what you want to do. What, what you want? How many members you want? Uh, the world. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> Oh man, hey miss listen man, we got a guy, we got a couple of guys here today, y'all, and they don't need no introduction, man. If you're watching uh movies, these guys is getting in these this movie thing now. Uh these, these guys right here out of New Orleans, man. These boy right here, hey Cali Yo to be exact. Believe that. Listen, man, Cali Yo projects to be exact. You I've heard I've heard uh, Master P and No Limit them. They stay to holler at Cali Yo. Yeah, yeah. Man, what what they boot up and don't give a F a bottle. Ho, something like that. I remember him saying something like that. <laughs> check, that. check it, man. Bought it, bought it. <laughs> yeah, bought it, bought it, man. Ace, man. Calio boys in the building, man. What's going on? Cooler, cool, man. Man, What's man thank y'all cool. for coming on the show, man. Appreciate yeah, man. you guys, man. You. No, you know it's love, man. Um, so. We gonna get into it, but I know how you are. Do you? Because you got two over here today. That's it's that's hard cool. to get in people background. Nah, stuff. I got it. Oh, you gonna handle it? I got it. Okay, I'm They're both from the same place, so it's easy. Let's get it. Yeah, but they ain't the same age. Oh, we round now? They're round now? Okay, okay. Y'all yeah, yeah. came he up. Y'all went to school together? Pause, no, he was nah. all the pause young. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So she gonna get out through that. I with wanna you. know, what was it like growing up in Cali, y'all? <laughs> I laugh at that question every Why? time. Because it's like, how is it growing up anywhere else? Right. Everywhere is different, though. Right. Like, where I'm from, it's a cool family vibe. Like, we got big old courtyards, so it's like everybody know everybody. It's, it's love there. Even though it's hell, it's love there. Right. See, I met a guy that said that um, living where he was from, he'd have to be in his house, had a mattress up at his window because they'd always have drive-by shootings and stuff all the time. But yeah, you, 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 you learn that quick. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, most of the time when people tell you about a fire you learn as a kid, stop, drop, and roll. Mm -hmm. We knew that when when we hear gunshots, everybody got to lay down. We already know it's normal. Mm -hmm. like, 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 like you said, coming up from that, it's like, when you get older and me older now, now I see a difference. Like, man, I grew up from there. Like, I mm -hmm. come from that, mm -hmm. from seeing the world. Because it's normal when you when you grow up there and your family from there and like everything normal, every all the all the bad stuff you right. see is not bad, it's just normal. It's like exactly. this is what it is. This this life. This is the neighborhood. Right. This is the this is the community we live in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. But how old were you when you first um stepped out of your neighborhood to see a different environment? Uh, I said I was young. I was young running through the city, so I was like in different projects and every different project it was different. It was different. Right, right. So it's different lingo, different talk. Right. So okay. But so you learn about leaving out of the city? Out of New Orleans. I'm saying oh, like, until I was introduced to like the music side. Mm. So how old were you? I had to be like, I won't see, about eight, 17, 18. Did, yeah. What stood out the most about wherever you went to that was so different to you than where you were from? It was like, they, they, they move how we move. Right. Like what? Like, Give me an example. I'm gonna say like, when you walk, I went on the road, so my first time being exposed to the world was on the road with a rap mm -hmm. group. So it's like we in the hoods and the hole in the walls, and it feel like I'm at home. So it's like the world is just like where you from. Right. They got good and bad in exactly. every part and every city. Like, and we was in the trenches in every city, so it just felt like home. Like I right. had that mentality. I wanted to go see how their projects were. Yeah, you feel you feel homely when you in the hood, mm. but like the difference is definitely a difference because New Orleans so different from a lot of places like because when I when I first stepped out I was like I want to say 17 mm -hmm. I came to Dallas mm. so I was in Dallas by my cousin because mm -hmm. I got put out of every school in the United States so I couldn't go back so I tried to come out here did you finish school nah wow <laughs> nah I didn't 
You know okay. what I'm saying? Kept going, getting put out of them. Oh, yeah. You know, well, after that, it was, it was over. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, from that moment on, it was like hustle time. Like, what I'm going to do? Mm-hmm. Like, what it, like, you know what I'm saying? What I'm about to do? But were you raised with your mom and dad? I was raised with my mom. I don't know my daddy. You don't know him at all? Yeah, so my daddy, that's why I look so different, right? But my mom, black, she Creole, so I okay. grew up with my mama. Okay. Yeah. So... But so you never heard? Cause you know how aunties and somebody gonna say your daddy round the street, he this 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 whatever. You never heard none. Nah. And you never, your mama didn't I, tell you anything. I never asked. You never. Cause asked. I had like like my mom a gangster, mm-hmm. and her brothers and gangsters, her little brothers. So my uncles they was, raised was, you. Was, was was big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Like Tuesday Crew and all that you hear about, like Bruce, Bernal, and all like that's my family. So I grew up under that. You know what I'm saying? So I, that was my role model. That was my daddy figure. My mom, like I said, she mm-hmm. was a gangster. So she she, she raised me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I just grew up with my mama. Because I always think, you know, I'm more, you know, mental. So I always think about all these different scenarios. And I always feel like the reason why children end up being bad or in certain situations is usually because of, number one, their environment. Right, right. But for males, for boys, it's always because the father is not there to really... Because mama can't be the daddy. Right. So a lot of times when mama trying to be hard on you, trying to tell you, don't do this, don't do that, whatever, a lot of times boys be like, whatever. Well, right. nah, whatever. because, you know, like, there's bad there's bad everywhere. Like, you could be from anywhere and be bad. It's the type of stuff you you doing. So it's mm-hmm. whatever you, you, the surroundings you are, that's what them, you know, they doing. Like, some kids, they running away because they friend running away. Like, my friends was toting guns and, you know what I'm saying? So it was a different level of it, but it's right. the same thing. Like, you going, you know, they good and bad. Mm. Bar, man, let me ask you a question, man. Like, you coming up early seeing that No Limit movement, man, like, you was a part of that, right? Yeah. So, like, like to see that happen right right in the projects where you guys are from, mm-hmm. how big was that? Man, it was big. <laughs> I remember the first time I seen, like, Master P used to come in a project in a Levan called the Ice Cream Man. And he used to just go play basketball in the gym. And we didn't know how big it was going to be at that point. Then P just left. And when he come back with that I'm about it, about it, it was different. Whoa. So you wait a minute. Because that was a whole big dilemma about P stealing uh, that whole ice cream man thing from them boys on, uh, uh, up there in California. But you telling me before Body Body he was dealing with ice cream trucks? Yeah, no, he had an ice cream man truck. The truck Are saved the ice cream man. So but this was before he even was really just tied in up there. What the, year was that? That was early on. No, he was already in California. Okay. But okay. he used to come down and he'd be in this ice cream man truck and he'd come in a project, play basketball and Body, everything. That, like if that mm-hmm. was Body Body early, that had to be early before that whole movement of because they had two ice cream man songs up there. Oh word! I yeah, didn't you didn't know that, but no. I've been watching. I'll be listening, and they they were trying to say like P kind of hijack Jack what they had going. But early as you talking about, that would be way too early. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, sure I'm, I'm P just had that because when Bowdy Bowdy it. It came, it was different. Like the project was on smash when Bowdy Bowdy came, and I yeah. remember the first time since he murdered coming in the project and he taking off his shirt. And everybody like who that is, and he got the true. True, because that TRU was big right. at that time. It was real big, right? The TRU thing seemed. I knew more about that. It was running naked. The No Limit thing. That this. These were two different scenarios, right? Nah, it really was the same. It thing. was the same, but they pushed. They was pushing one. Seemed like earlier than the other more. Yeah, it was. Um, first it was like it was Pete, but when he did his brothers TRU, that was TRU. Yeah, so him Silk and C was TRU. Dang, that's crazy. So, and, and, and did you think, what did you feel like it, this serious and it, it's going to be some money, some changes in what about they were time About it, about it came, it was on fire from there. Like, mm-hmm. about it, about it, the movie, it just took off from there. Damn, that was early on to be doing an independent film too. So, that's crazy, man. And that's like, still the number one independent film in the streets is about it, about mm-hmm. it. Was Calio really like, you know, like the way that People were pushing it and saying the the the, the, the like the grind, you know. The, the it wasn't no script. It was just as he just pulled up in the project on a regular date. So yeah. everything that transpired in the project for about it, about it, that's was exactly how the Cali is. You got like hundreds of people outside all day, twenty four hours a day. By the time you just say three o'clock in the morning, you might got a hundred people in the cold way. Wow! Like, and you, you don't so you inside. can do you can do something. 
Dang that, you know, because you go from every hood. You, I mean, in Atlanta, it's Bowen Homes, and, right. and you know, uh, you got Calio. Y'all got some more projects down there too. I'm pretty sure yeah, y'all yeah, yeah. You got, you know, you got Uptown. You got all type of different stuff going on over there. Right. Like, like man, like, but then I always run to the hood. She know how I am. Even in Chicago, they standing outside the stoves, man. Like right. wherever I go, wherever it is. In L.A., I went to watch. I get my hair cut. Yeah, I always said, I'm trying to go to my people, hood. bro. Like, right, right, right. I, like, man, y'all better be careful. Like, but these, these people is our people, mm -hmm. bro. Right, facts. Like, and I think people don't realize that. Yeah. I see, you know, that's crazy that right, people right. be thinking like that, bro. Right. But in the streets, we know how each other move. Like, yeah. we, we, it's a sign of respect the way you walk when you're in the hood. Like, you ain't got to right. worry about offending somebody else. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But it's different because then um, I remember when we went to Chicago, Although we drove down there because he wanted to stop and go check out some of the stores and stuff yeah, like that. But, but it because was too, it I was, was with him, <laughs> he started thinking like, nah, let's, let, let's keep nah, going. No, because you got like 25, 30 niggas standing in front of the store. I don't have no heat. We in a brand new, we in something nice. Right. And I ain't got nothing to, in case, if I have to defend right, myself. Right, right, So it's like, nah, not this one. So I went to the west side. Right. Then we went to the north side. Which so you got to be really smart nice. with it. But when smart, really what it is. When this was. Uh, this, this was, was probably five years ago, six years ago. Maybe five years ago. We've right, been right, back right. since streets then. Streets change now. Yeah, right. we talking about now the new streets. This no. shit different now. Yeah. Way different. This different. It ain't no respect out here. No, no. At all. And, and I just you know you really want to know like when I went back when we were Larry Hoover Jr. and all them boys, it was different. You know what I'm saying? You you knew that they knew how they was moving in their city. Right, right. That's what the check in thing be about. <laughs> People really get offended by it, but really it's like. It's the way you look at it. It's like if I'm a, if you come and rock out with me, right. you know I'm not I'm I'm for the rock with you. You know we good because we rocking together. Right. But if I'm rocking with just 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 checking in with somebody I don't know, that that's different. It right. could be exploitation. But right, you know how right, you right. said how you said you know things yeah, are you, different. You let it get like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they see what they're dealing with, they are gonna see how to approach you because mm -hmm. you can check in like just on some man. Look, you need something. I got you. You know what That's I'm saying? It. I let my people know you out here because you know everybody be connecting when they in the city. I know the rivals. I know this. I know this. People come in, they see shit. You know what I'm saying? They can evolve that. Like, no, nah, I got my people out here. That's but real. you know how you say That's things real. are different nowadays because they have no respect and stuff like that. But like how you was talking about earlier. It's a different generation, but the younger kids, it's normal to them mm -hmm. compared to we're older. We know certain things have how it used to be. So now we're looking like, no, nah, it ain't like how it used to be. Y'all ain't got no respect. This, 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 this. Right, because right. I think the respect wasn't enforced. It, like, you took a lot of street cats all around the world off mm -hmm. the streets. And these kids grew up with no fathers mm -hmm. and they grew up without the top man in charge right. that make you show respect. Like when right. I was young, it was people that enforced respect. Mm -hmm. right. Like if you ain't gonna be out here cursing around these old folks, they gonna beat your ass up. Right. Or That's real. Right, you right. gotta get from around here. You see an old lady, you gonna help her with her groceries. You need help, hold a dough for a woman. Right. Like the thing, so they ain't got you, a lot of OGs no more. No. Yeah, but they got locked up. That's what I'm saying. Right. They ain't get killed. The old, the true OGs got locked up, and that's locked the ones up. who just couldn't leave the streets alone right. and go take fifty. Like, look at me. Well, I feel like honestly, that's 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 triple OGs, cause like this generation, we the OGs now. Yeah, <laughs> OGs are younger nowadays. Like they was young when we were looking up. They they were like our age. You know what I'm saying? Like we just getting older. So you know what I'm saying? But it's like what I feel like a lot of like I, I, a lot of the kids that's like in that generation that's messed up right now because it wasn't no guidance, it wasn't no OG. We had somebody we knew. Who who was who, and they, everybody had respect, even the killers. Like y'all watch out, you know what I'm saying? Now it's like everybody just feel I got a gun, I'm a gangster, I shoot some, I'm a gangster. Like them dudes, like more worrying about how we, we gotta get away, we gotta get, you know what I'm saying? Not getting caught, they just doing stupid shit. And like what I say about a lot of people in the world, like the generation, like like we couldn't get hold of Katrina happened, so everybody all over the place, and then a lot of them. A lot of people knew us for, oh, they kill us, they kill us, they kill us. Everybody, everybody in New Orleans ain't no killer. You know no, what I'm saying? I, I feel what you're saying. So that. They, 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 they brainwashed themselves to be a gangster. Like, oh, you from New Orleans, oh, you a killer. So they, they pretending. So all the scary mm -hmm. niggas. Yeah, said. so they all pretending the so ones, much they, they, that they're a killer. Now I got a gun, now, now, now I'm a killer. So now they going, now they ain't no structure, they ain't no rule. They just pop shooting. They just shooting shit because they know, they ain't worrying about, oh, I'm going to catch this when, when, when the time right. They just like, they just going with the move. Everybody getting caught. Everybody doing this. Innocent people getting hit because it wasn't. They ain't, they ain't have nobody to listen to. Not not all these little kids coming out with this straight. 
kill them song, shoot them up. We yeah, beefing with it. It's all in the music, and too. they growing up off that. That's what they feel. That was that's that's how we grew up off music. Mm-hmm. Oh, how I, this I, I but need. But we've seen consequences for our actions. Like, yeah, they rat but they and still come doing right it. back home. They yeah. rat and come home and kill some more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what 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 I, I seen Cameron in the hood with you, man. Like. You, how you bring that boy to the hood? That's just, the home. How man. the hell you bring camera? He, that nigga from the East Coast, man, from from Harlem, he stay on his block forever. That's the way they do it in New York. I be up there. They don't go nowhere like that. The, some of them, but he one of them ones that sprung out. He go everywhere. Yeah, right. yeah that's the home. <laughs> how was it meeting time, him? He's he live, man. I like him. Yeah, that's the home, man. Every time he come in the city, you know, we link up. But um, really funny story. I was fixing the charge, so I was out on buying on house arrest, so okay. I couldn't move around and do no music or nothing. So what I did was I brought all the resources to me. Okay. So I was I started booking shows. So I brought Cameron to the Cali U. I brought the Breakfast Club to the Cali U. I brought Nipsey Hustle to the Cali U. Dej Lowe to the Cali U. Shot Glizzy. Like, I'm taking everybody and I'm taking them to the hood. So when I book them, I just float them through the city. You feel me? Let everybody tap in, whoever won't get a feature or something. Because I got tired of the promoters Letting rappers come in town, they get their money and they leave. So they don't show no love to that's the city. Hard, boy. But that's going on today. Yeah. That's man. still going on. We ain't letting that go what on. What you just watch. said, like, like, like that's what that's what happens. Like right. I got in this game, man, it wasn't like no, you know, the promoters bring people to the city, but they not trying to no, they not no, you have to know somebody. Or even if you do know somebody, again. They still feel like, man, I'm booking him. I ain't rocking with it, with it like that. But they don't understand. That's how the city grow. That's right. how you get that look. Right. That's a fact. But, but I had to create it on my own. But I already was rocking. But I'm just saying, I knew the moves. I never even, I didn't look at it that way. Because I pray for it, and then God give it to me. That's a fact. Ain't no in right. between. Yeah. Ain't no middle man. You know? That's a fact. You know? <laughs> Direct to the source. I got, you know? I got yep. the man on my side. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. You yep. got yep. to have the man on your side, man. Yep. So yep. did y'all do some music videos? What did y'all do down yeah, there? Y'all you know, me and Cam, we did a song, and you know, we shot a video on the project and everything. That's hard. Right? That's hard. And, and so, what year was that? Because that was a while back. Yeah, that had to be on um, right before I went to jail. So what year that was? 2015? 2015. Yeah. That's hard. That's hard. Do you like their new show? They got a new uh, podcast they be yeah, doing yeah, the sports on, don't they? Yeah, they got tap in with that. Yeah. <laughs> It is what it is, you know what I mean? I was going to really get at them the other day because they had a few things going on about the city, about Dallas, about a couple of things. They were saying some stuff, and I was like, man, I got to get at them. Then I said, no, nah, I'm going to let them make it, man. man. Dallas lit right now. Y'all got Kyrie oh, and Luka, man. Huh? Come Y'all on, man. Lit right Come now. on, now. Dallas <laughs> always lit. We got Earl Spence, too. Don't, don't oh, trip. Oh, man, I don't know about the Cowboys, though. <laughs> hey, they still out. They say, hey, listen, they may not. I don't want to go that with you because they still, that franchise different. Yeah, that yeah. money hit different over there. Yeah. See, that's what we talk about, the OGs. See, y'all, we don't want to respect the OGs, man. That Troy A. M. M. Smith era over with. It's dog. over, ain't Y'all it, stuck man. with Dak right now. No, mm-hmm. but Dak going to have to come on with it. I think he can do something. We, are, we ain't giving up. Uh-oh. <laughs> we ain't giving up on Dak still. You ain't giving up on Dak? Hell no. <laughs> I'm Dak tired. I'm tired. Dak. He from Louisiana. Nah, Dak gave up on you Dak, You hear what man. I said? He from y'all hood. <laughs> Who? Dak from Louisiana. What they say, I'm from New Orleans. I ain't from Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> so man, like, 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 what's the okay? This movie, I, you had, what's the movie the name of the movie again? Super rich. Super rich. Is it super rich? Super, super rich. rich. Like super rich. Yeah, like a super rich type of guy. You feel me? Tell me a little bit about the movie, man. And so, you came up with that name. Yeah. One day, and, this this funny man, Cameron said we smoking some weed one time, right? And we smoking some good weed. I'm like, man, this is like some super rich type <laughs> shit. You heard me? He like, ooh, that's you should use that. You should use that. So I did a song with it. And the song had the city on fire when I dropped the song. And it was me, Mr. Marcello from the Magnolia and Cito. That's Birdman best friends. So okay. So we shot the video, brought out the whole city. We shot in Cali on the Magnolia, and I just ran with it. So when I was thinking about writing this movie, I'm like, shit, super rich. And I created it around a weed strain, and I got a um, I got a cannabis strain out there in California. That's hard. Okay. That's hard. Yeah. So the movie about a weed strain, it just make you get off that bullshit. Like it, it, you smoke it, it get you out of body. Wow. You experience, mm-hmm. so it just open your mind up mm-hmm. on some positive shit. That's hard. Yeah. So it's That's not. Hard. Is it like an action or is it's it a comedy, comedy? action? Because me and him at war in the movie. Oh, okay. 
That's yeah. how. Oh, so you you and I said war. Yeah, we had war in the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got to check this out. Yeah, we man. start off at war. <laughs> Y'all so come together. We're never friends. <laughs> yeah, it, it, we just know of each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We like two same industry. Okay. Super. So Y'all gotta go out? check that out, man. But well, we gonna drop this in the fall. In the fall. Super yeah. rich, man. Y'all okay. gotta check that what out. What platforms you gonna drop it on? We gonna drop it on too, man. Okay. That's hard. Right, that's I'm, hard. I'm going over there and try to run two of it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. I see. That's a lane right that now. That is a lane. It is. Yeah. That's a lane. Yeah, if you got fast. it, if you good, you can take it over. Oh, for sure. If you great. Yeah, I just got sick and tired. Won't be long before Netflix calling you. Call right? you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody. coming to New Orleans and shooting movies, and there ain't nobody in New Orleans in our movies. Wow. Like, they got this movie CTC that they shot in New Orleans, man, and that was a bad representation of us. Mm. And the RZA came down, and he used the same guys that was playing in Wu-Tang to play New Orleans niggas. Like, Why not get New Orleans guys? Exactly, and we got Wait, too man, many Because one, one thing I hate, I hate to see movies Here we go. I know where... Exactly what you're gonna say. These fake accents. Yeah, yeah I, I knew that was coming. I can't stand it. I knew that I was coming. Because I'd be like, no, that's not real. Like, right. They don't please. say you want it like that. They don't say yeah. baby like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can get local local people to do different parts. It yeah, don't have to be a big parts, but it can be some parts, but we you know? Got, we, but we got, we got actors for the big parts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like, we got a bunch of actors from New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they don't know. They know. They know. <laughs> They know this a lot of them been on stuff. Culture. Anthony Maggie, you know culture. where he's from? New Orleans. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, man, it's a lot. Wendell mm. Pierce. Wendell Pierce. Uh, uh, Jason Mitchells. Who's the biggest actor out of there, out of New Orleans? Tyler Perry. Stop Other playing. Other than Tyler, Tyler Perry. Other than Don't Tyler know. Perry. The, 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 the. Raynell. No, what the oh. dude name is? Barry yeah, Tyler? No, it's, it's somebody mm. bigger than, uh, what his name is? And No, man. Uh, Harry Connick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who is that? Yeah. I don't, what movie Harry did he come Jr. in? Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a big actor. He, he, he's. Yeah, I think he's from the West Bank. Huh? What movie did he come in? <laughs> he is Steven Seagal from out on the no, West Bank. No, really. Nah, he just was a police out there. <laughs> 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 him and Harry Lee was partners. Oh, there. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, man. What's the first movie you've ever done? Is this the first movie? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. no. Yeah, oh, okay. I know you. You done? Yeah, I did a movie called Big Dog with JT the Bigger Figure. Okay. JT the Bigger Figure. Yeah, man, that's the homie. He came that's to New Orleans and he was one of those ones. Like, this is my partner though, but he came now shooting a movie, and he called me for a part, and I'm like. What you doing? And he just coming in our project with other people. Right. And it's like, nah, nah, we, we don't do you this. We don't do that. Nah, we could be partners. So let's let's right. link up and do something together. So right. he gave me a number. I gave it to him and we got it done. Oh, so that's we good. Just built the so brotherhood bigger that. figure, respect to the move. Yeah, he had to. That's man, that's good. hard, man. I like it because you you step it up. But but it take heart to do what you're doing because some dudes would be, you really, like, I ain't never act. So you got to think about it. You you got heart to do that. You know what I'm saying? You you probably got more heart. Certain niggas in the hood, probably some niggas hiding from that camera. When that camera come, <laughs> niggas, nah, I would be, no, put yeah, them cameras up. Yeah, that's a fact, but, though. But, you, but know. you wrote this movie, though. Yeah, I wrote it. Yeah, but the one this is your first movie you've written. Yeah, this is the first movie I've written. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how okay. I love The it. first oh, yeah. one was a running gun. It's just like we just we just pulled up on every block, every project in the city. Like I expanded my reach. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it ain't too many people that could do what I could do in New Orleans that could go through every hood and tap right. in with every big dog. Right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's a major. Uh Ace Man, I, I know you done been in several mm. films, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I started in two thousand eight. I started in 2008 on a uh, HBO series, Tremé. Mm. Okay. So I started on the second season playing as a rapper. So that was my first ever acting experience. I ain't never went to school for it, but I still never went to school. And so I've you didn't take no acting classes at all? Mm -mm. Hmm. So what helped me was music. Okay. So I played as a rapper, so I was like, I'm, I'm being myself. I can remember lines because I can remember lyrics. Mm -hmm. I could get into the, the mood because I could get into the mood when I hear an instrumental, then it pulls you into, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I... I put the two together. So when I film, I feel like I'm shooting a music video. Oh, facts. So that's what helped me with music so I could get into it. And then I, when, I, when I get around these big name actors and shit and I, I see, okay, this person act like this on screen and off screen. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just be myself. I'm gonna just be a different version of myself. But the difference is to me, when you do a music video, music videos are so short compared to a movie. Right. In a movie, you have to stay in that character for a much longer time than if you do in a... Well, not facts, but... When it's when it's film time, that's not really a long time. Like you'll wait all day before you film. You just there, 
You know yeah, what I'm saying? But on, like I said, friend. I'm still me because mm-hmm. I'm I'm just a different version of myself. Mm-hmm. Like one of my biggest films that uh I'm 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 I'm, work, I'm still working on is a TV series, a BT series called Sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So we just finished the second season. That's going to be coming out pretty soon. But uh, and I play as a hacker. So they wanted me to be from LA. Nerdy. Yeah, glasses, tech. <laughs> and that ain't nowhere near me, but I just, I got a professional side. So it's like, all right, I'm about to figure it out. Like, I'll be on that. You're not a type, hack, all this stuff. And then I had to hook up with a dialect coach. Because mm. when they first met me, I just I just was in my natural right. accent. Right. So they're like, look, you, we need you to sound like you're from Cali. So I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Like, it don't matter how much I clear my words up, you're going to still hear it. And so people, so they made me like, all right, well, you from Louisiana then on the show. Oh. Because I tried. I went set with the dialect coach. Really? And, and he, people saw it and it was like, you from Louisiana? I'm like, man, I tried hard, too. <laughs> <laughs> I tried hard. I'm, I'm, I'm more thinking of my pronunciation of how I'm saying it than you gotta the whole thing. You got to keep trying. You got to keep trying because it blows my mind when I see some of these actors like Idris. Oh, and yeah. knowing that he's from England and... You know, I didn't even know. All the time I've been yeah. watching his movies, oh, yeah. I did not a know lot that. Till I heard him do the interview and I heard his natural dialect. I'm right. like, they, yeah, they killing it. And Over watching there, the wire, you would never knew the wire. You yeah. never knew he was that. Ain't no dude. Ain't no dude from uh, BMF. Who that? Which one? The uh, the crazy one, L- Lamar. Oh really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Overseas. You hear that boy talk? Yeah, he, he's from. <laughs> He's from I knew it was coming. I know. The dude from Get Out. Uh, <laughs> was, it's, a lot, it's a lot of them over I was there. trying. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Wow. And yeah, because I noticed because a lot, and I was like, why is it that a lot of English actors, like they take over the whole, like acting, like Hollywood, yeah. they take over a lot of movies. Right. Because you, yeah, you don't ever yeah. notice till they're doing the interviews. Right. And you're like, how many of these actors are from, or did they move over there yeah. after they get big? Yeah, right. you know, dude. Uh, yeah. From uh, Snowfall. Oh, all right, I know that for mm, sure. But yeah. I guess I would. English is the most spoken language, so it's easier to learn that than us learning French. Like, but then actually, you speak English right now. You're from New Orleans. You should be able to still pick up the accent of California. Right, right. right. I, I don't think I try. It comes but y'all dialect fact. is so strong. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean. So, but I'm sure you just take do more practice. Yeah, yeah, that's no, I, 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 I practice. That. I definitely practice. You know what I'm saying? When I'm on the show, like, I I, I, I go with it. You know what I'm saying? So, so let me ask y'all a question. Um, Soldier Slim, I always ask a lot of people this because, especially being from New Orleans, I know a lot of people who talk very highly of him. Um, you you knew him, of course. Yeah, I know him for sure. So for sure. tell me about him growing up and so forth. Slim used to cut my hair. Him and my cousin was best friends. My cousin, like, who he used to run under. His mm-hmm. name was Rez. They called him Slugged Up Nigga. Mm-hmm. So under KLC and on Parkway Pump and Records, that's who my cousin used to rap for. He was supposed to sign a Master P before so did Slim. He got mm-hmm. killed. So I know Slim, like, Slim had it since young, like, as young Magnolia Slim, mm-hmm. he was that dude with rapping and everything. Mm. Like, for sure, for sure. Wow. And for you? With Slim, man, Slim was always my, uh, that's my favorite rapper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So What's your favorite up, song? Oh. Since he your favorite rapper. <laughs> you when you say favorite song? I don't know if I got a favorite, favorite song. One that stands out. Give me one. Well, I pay for it. You know okay. what I'm saying? There was just like okay. a gangster dude on some sw- on some swag shit. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh-huh. like, I right, bet. But he got class, and you know he was telling the truth. Like, mm-hmm. so it's always it always drew me to him. I like his rap style, and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But nah, Slim was legend. No, because a lot of people, because since we've been going back and forth to New Orleans, a lot of people always talk about him and talk about him very highly. But I've met some people who say that, you know, it's just now that he's gone, everybody's talking so good about him. But when he was around. People wasn't really just, you know, dealing with him like that. Nah, that's mm-hmm. cap. That's, that's cap. cap. Like, one thing for sure, Slim. Slim was love. Like, Slim pull up in that Cali, you and be yeah. out there all day, and he a leader and going to St. Bernard and going to Opera Field. Yeah. Like, he was one of the ones that could go in every project, too. And I tell everybody, like, Slim got killed before he could, he was going through that transition mm-hmm. to make that change. I heard that. Like, he said in one of his songs, um, I'm coming closer with God, asking him to forgive me. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. We he died in the middle like them X pills hit New Orleans and it went crazy. It took the scariest person on there and made him real mm-hmm. on drugs. And you ride around to that slim and you on some 
Right. X pills you out your mind. You mm-hmm. might shoot up a whole crowd. Mm-hmm. And that ain't what Slim was rapping right. about. It was it was murder with a purpose. Like it was always get the money first. Mm-hmm. And Slim died before he could make that transition mm-hmm. to to change that whole culture in New Orleans. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he was trying to change that culture in New Orleans. Wow, Slim is one of the ones. Hey, every show we get we we get a mention on Slim, boy. Cause everybody said they loved him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a fact. Though. Yeah, it was a it was a. Well, everybody felt it when Slim got killed. Yeah, real talk. So, um, since both of y'all in, you know, in music, right? I've always said, you know, being a mother and raising children, and children are into this music. People always come sit at that seat and talk about the music helped me through. The music did this, music did that. But now with the music, the way how it is, especially rap music, always talking about shooting, killing, robbing, all of that sort of stuff. I know people who are entertainers who said, I don't even let my kids listen to this, or I have to change my way of what I'm rapping about because now I have children who are listening to this. Right. How can I be that representation? So what do you think about the music and where it's at right now and the young people that are listening to it? Uh, we talk about this in the car on the way up here. Like, I don't listen to that. If it don't feed my soul, I don't listen to it. And right. I don't, it was one of the reasons I stopped rapping because it's like, I ain't rap my life already. It ain't nothing else. What I'm doing right now, that shit boring to them. They don't want to hear that. Right. Mm-hmm. And when me and him got back together, it's like hearing what he rapping about. I say, you a very special person when you can get on a beat and it say exactly what you want to say, not what the beat make you say. Because a lot of people just put words together and they don't mean none of what they saying. Shoot him and spin on him and smoke his grandmother. You don't mean none of that. You ain't even right. living like that. It sound good. But you will put that out there and you will have somebody who look up to you and go do exactly what you saying in a song. You mm-hmm, feel me? Because it's mm-hmm. like, the difference on the influence with me, it was it was more of a get money culture coming up. Like, every rapper rapped about getting money. Mm-hmm. Like, you ain't respect no robbers or somebody who talk about taking something from somebody. Like, they got killed fast. Mm-hmm. So, it was always about the hustlers. But then the music shifting is about the killers and the drug users. So, it's like, who could take the most drugs? If you could get on Molly and Percocet, Right. You you lit, <laughs> you mm-hmm. feel me? Like you on you on a speed ball. Right, right. Right. And all these rappers be telling their business in this music. That's why a lot of these recos and they arresting people and all right. of that because of that. And I would always think, I'm like, how can you be so stupid? Facts. Right. Wow. Let's talk about tough guy, man. It, it, help me out with that. What 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 how did that become about that label? Tough guy was that was my homie Dodo, man. My okay. homie Dodo and him and Master P was like they was good friends. So um, one day he just was on the porch like, man, we're going to start a record label and I'm going to make P sign us. He ain't say I'm going to ask P. Like, I'm going to make P sign us. And like, they don't know no fucking Master P like that. <laughs> and he started the label and he put some groups together and then he got um, a business partner. They brought Mr. Marcelo in there and he went straight to Master P and got a deal. And I remember one day we was on the porch and the phone rang and Priority Records telling him he went gold. And it's like, I went gold, nigga. You sold five hundred thousand albums. Like shit, it's time to hit the road now. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard, man. For real though, because it was like then once he got that phone call and said that he like no more drug dealing. Like if all y'all gonna whoever gonna hustle, y'all go over there with that shit. We gonna do it. So it went music. bam, bam, bam. Yeah, it went bam, he bam, bam. He told you it boom, it happened. Yeah, for sure. For so sure. was currency? Currency was a part of that, right? Yeah, currency was a part of that. He came. Probably the, like the, the the second leg of Tough Guy. Like once we went gold, then he formulated the, like a, a record company, and then Marcelo brought Currency, and that's where he started at. Wow, how how is it? Have you 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 and Currency done hung out? And yeah, yeah, that's my brother. How how is it? How is Currency these days? Like, I know he came to Dallas one time. I was like, I was trying to get him on the show, but I didn't know you at the time. I wish I'd have knew you then. I don't oh, yeah, think they call sure, him. Out of here with that. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but how is he? I mean, I've been a big fan of him. Yeah, he good. I just left him another day, man. We did a um, car show down there for Essence Fest. Let him know Boss Talk watching out for him. I'm I always watching. That. You know what I mean? Big brother watching. I'm big brother now. I'm with these cameras. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so for sure, for like, sure. like, so, do you feel like Tough Guy was a good representation as a branch out from mm-hmm. No Limit like that? Hell yeah. It was, it was, the, it was the guys that Master P wouldn't take on No Limit, they could come under Dodo because it's like he that street guy and he the one who, he respect him. So if he tell him chill, chill, like see Murder hung under Dodo. So every time see Murder come from California, he hanging under Dodo. And Dodo that move and shake are like, you know, his word is law. What happened to Dodo? Dodo got killed. How? Street shit. 
So he, yeah, because I know how y'all is in New Orleans. I ain't nobody <laughs> street shit. That's it. No, I'm not. Shit. No, I mean, well, did he get shot? Did yeah, he, he got. Yeah, he got shot up. But it's like in the Calio projects. Nah, nah, they ain't okay. coming back there. Okay, nah. I'm just asking. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, from yeah. the outside looking in, you be yeah, like, it don't really happen like that in Calio. Like people don't come into Calio and kill people. Like, nah, that wasn't happening. Wow. So uh, I want to ask you also about uh, Kevin Miller. Yeah. I've been asking everybody about Kevin because Kevin was the. That was the whole movement when when P was coming out with TRU and and, and no limit. You right. hear him say, "My little brother Kevin Miller, rest in peace." He would say that all the time. He was bodied by it, and he would keep, you know, every, you know, that that uh uh my, miss my homies and all that. Right? Like, did you ever know him or see him in Calio when he was? Living? I know of him through his uncle. You feel what I'm saying? Through your uncle. Hey, so your uncle was over there. He know what was your uncle name? Bruce. He still around? No, nah, nah, he did nah, too. He, he did too. Yeah, yeah. So Bruce used to be he a little older. Yeah, Bruce was the head of that clique that that Master P and Kevin and them come under. Okay, mm -hmm. so he was a part of that Tuesday crew. If you hear Master P, you always talking the Tuesday crew. That's who Bruce was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know Kevin through you know his uncle and stuff. You feel me? But you know I say like if you and TRU like losing your brother, that'll give you like I ain't got no other option. It's either go to the streets and become a killer over my little brother or do something positive. And I think P channeled that hurt. And did something positive for his brother. Wow, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of, 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 of P. I, I, you see things, right? Like recently, I seen some thing where people, I, I, I seen some people saying P might not have the money. He might be broke, and and you hear this stuff. But I'll be like, what kind of broke is that? These big houses and cars and <laughs> shit. Well, I mean, I want to be broke. I won't be that type you know of broke. This right. the kind of broke right. I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like when 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 you see people making these accusations, but then you see him living how he living. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, what is broke? Cause That's what I'm saying. I mean, he's still in Calabasas. He just brought a new <laughs> house. But one thing about Pete, he a hustler though. You might every hustler have a downtime when you're trying right. to realign shit, trying to figure it out. And I think Master P just went through that. I'm not dealing with movies. I'm not dealing with music. I'm going to product. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he hit with the rap snacks. And now he running with Snoop with the Snoop Loops. Man, I'm going to put some Snoop Loops on this table and eat me a bowl just for the nigga, to be mm. honest with you. Yeah, I wanna, for sure. I want to taste it. I ain't never tasted it before, but that's going to happen. Mm. I'm going to get me a bowl of what they... You ate some of them? Nah, I ain't I'm going to check them out. <laughs> I'm going to check them out. I'm going to check them out. I got all the snacks on my shelf back here. Yeah. I've been waiting on him to call me so I can pull them out and say, yo, you sponsoring me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got them. Because one day I was like, man, I'm going to get in here. So they sell them out here? Uh, the, I don't know. I'm going to find me some if they in L.A., wherever. I'm a, somebody sending me some of them. Yeah, it's called sure. Amazon. Go on there. Amazon have everything. Yeah, Amazon got it. I don't know how the hell this dude can figure all this out. What's his name? Jeff? What's mm -hmm. that? What, what? <laughs> <laughs> but so, so when you think about just uh, like all the music that do happen down there now, is there who's the hot artist? Is there any hot artists down there? Yeah, you know right. what? At the head, it's, it's currency up there at the top. Curtis is still the man. Top of yeah. the food chain. That's his city. Mm. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, we could yeah. put a stamp on it and say that's Jet Life City. Mm -hmm. Then under that branch, you got Rod 49. You got yeah, Rod 49. Mm -hmm. You got YD the Ellis. You got Cali Your Bub. You got Cole Youngin. You mm -hmm. got Treated. Like, New Orleans on fire right now. Like, we, we coming back for our position in this music. So I'll, I got to ask this. I ask this every show, especially dealing with someone in New Orleans. Um, how major would it be for the city if Master P came together with Birdman for a sit down and an interview? I, I don't know. I don't, to be honest, I don't know that's the impact never happened. it'll be it'll now because the they so. You don't think it'll never happen? Uh, nah, they talking right now, but I don't know the impact. It could happen. Hmm? Yeah, they, they didn't talk. It could happen. They talking. They already been talking because I heard they had conversation through. I don't think uh, Mr. Servon would lie to me. He told me they didn't had conversation. Yeah, they before. talking, but how impactful when mm -hmm. they older now? That's what so I was like, wondering. They, it would have been more when they were younger. Gap, huh? Yeah, like that generation of gap, like all those guys who was between whatever went on. They old. They living their life with their families. Like they ain't tripping about nothing. You feel me? It's like how do you touch these youths now? Y'all can sit down now. Y'all come together and make a powerhouse and sign some people and put some situations together you feel me now that'll change the streets that'll change because you have to give people opportunities yeah because i always feel like you know when i see people who've been say you had millions 
and then you got caught up and you went to prison and you come back, change your life, and you're trying to educate some of these youths of how to act and how to be and stuff like that. A lot of these youth be, especially in the streets, they'll be like, who are you? You ain't got nothing right now, this, this, right. this, this, this. But these people still have. These people are still striving. These people are still going, moving up. Right. They can still educate a lot of these youngsters because they used to be in the streets back in the days. Right. So they can't, and I would think that these younger people would still listen to these people. Yes. Because well, of their status. Well, opportunity. Because other than that, you eating good and you telling me to change my ways while I'm starving and then you walk off and you still eating good and I'm still right. hungry. Mm. You got to wow. give me that opportunity. But there's a lot of people though. How can you give everybody an opportunity that See, you're trying to touch? I mean, you, it's structured. They, they put us in poverty through a plan, and we could get a plan to get out of poverty. Mm -hmm. This ain't just happened overnight. They structured us to keep us there. You feel mm -hmm. me? But that's the government. When you think about Pete or Birdman, they small compared to the government. To the government of the world, but you, we feed the hood. We take care of the hood. We inspire the hood. Yeah. Like under my watch, and I ain't going to say like P and Baby ain't do it because they did it also, but mm -hmm. I carried the torch and put some through college and inspire some artists to become artists and actors and you feel okay. what I'm saying so it's like, like you saying. said when you at that height in your game you got to get that game to somebody else to thrive and then they feed their family so like, you just mainly talking about the New Orleans right because mm -hmm. that's that's what's affected by right. them two not getting along right mm -hmm. what is the difference between by? uptown and downtown and Cal what is the difference I'm not from there uptown to Mecca you know what I'm saying <laughs> let me know what's going down oh. uptown to Mecca you give me the difference what's the difference it's the Mecca I was swag I was lingo I would talk I you gonna influence. say that because you from there nah I run with downtown shout out to downtown like I got a lot of homies downtown you know and I, I live downtown shit when I was a kid I grew up half and half what about the, what's the difference between that and the West Bank? Well, I don't know. I'm interviewing people. <laughs> like it's you know New Orleans is like every section is its own city. Like right. everybody got different lingo. You feel right, what I'm right. saying? Like the West Bank, they got their lingo. They do what they do. Like you know what I'm saying? They don't have. They got one project on the West Bank, and their project is shaped like a Chicago project. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's one big long building and stuff. Like uptown, we got coatways and cuts and everything. You feel me? So on right. our side, our, our code ways is different. So I it, got a question. So Randall Watts, tell me how was he important to um, Uptown? Oh, he was important to the yo. Like that's big dog. That's what I'm talking about. Like a guy who has the influence at his height, and you ain't disrespecting nobody around him. You need something, you holler at him. You need advice, you can holler at him. He give back to the kids. He mm. make sure. He put smiles on faces. Like Randall was one of those guys. If it's boring here, give a DJ, a, put some jumping jacks up for the kids to go have fun and mm. just to take their mind out of poverty. You feel mm. what I'm saying? Like Randall was one of the ones, though. Mm. Like rest in peace, Slim. You heard me? Rest in peace. You know, we always we interviewed Boz here before. Oh, word, the big so, homie. The big now. homie. So tell me about your interactions with Boz. Tell me about. Um, how you think about him as a person? So I just told Boz this yesterday, you heard me? <laughs> <laughs> For real? Yeah, Boz said, Shout out to Boz, that's my boy. Why you always worrying about bitch ass shit, bro? <laughs> Why you always worrying about bitch ass shit? You gonna let a bitch ass nigga get you worked up? <laughs> like, man, you right, man. <laughs> oh, gee. For real though, Bob, like you get them bitch ass niggas too much real estate in your mind, man. That's Stop worrying about what they're doing, man. That's let them keep hating, mm -hmm, man. Mm -hmm. He said, as long as you got the respect of the people you want to respect you, then you, you, you good, you feel mm -hmm. me? You ain't worrying about no peons respecting you. It's the people who you admire. If they respect you, then you doing something right. 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 That's a fact. Wow. I, I, I just, I, I think about just the fact of, man, you seen all that coming up as a youth, man. You seen the whole movement, man. I'm jealous, man. <laughs> but you right up and close them. You too, you was young, but you seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. City was on fire. I mean, and City had to be on fire. You got, man, cash money. When they when they came on the scene, like, how was it? And and how did you, this three chain, like, you know me, we talked a little bit about it, like, oh, yeah, how you come up with up. the three chain before up. anybody? And, and did you, uh, give me the history on this chain. Man, Cause I done seen it. I believe Birdman had it on. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So tell but, me about it, like, what's the history of it. The third was the Malfamine, the Magnolia, and the Calio. You feel what I'm saying? Like, every project got a ward, but our ward got three projects, and the three head projects is in our ward. So, you know, I represent that whole third ward because I be in the Magnolia, the Calio, I be on all the back streets and everything. So, I went and got that three, and one night I'm in the uh, trial to stop, and Birdman and Tantiza coming up, and he see that thing glistening. He like, 
I like that there, little brother. I like that. Mm -hmm. Shit, about a month later, Birdman got a three and a 13, like twice the size Ooh. of my shit. <laughs> man, and then, what, did you th what did you think when you seen his? You like, like, damn. Man, why would you do me that, man? <laughs> you why did. You ain't even out shit like that. Why would you do that to me, man? Come on, man. I got the streets on fire with this thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard, though, but but the, that that's and that's respect, though. Look what you influenced, man. Yeah, that's a fact, man. And, that, and, and you knew that he seen yours you like he got that thing mm -hmm. man yeah for sure for sure i know for sure because after crazy. i popped up with it then he popped up with it then a few other uptown out that third wall went to popping up with him you heard me man that's hard man I got at the end of the day i only I mean, I asked that but, but because you got to think about it but birdman had a lot of jury you know yeah what that's the reason yeah. why i was thinking about that i too. heard that in uptown or uh, where, where birdman is a stunner and they be like okay that's why they be stunned that is this the true thing Man, that's the way that's mm -hmm. influenced me. You heard me? Like, really? I, like, I, like I, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you hear this. See, he influenced me. <laughs> For real? Yeah, I don't wear jewelry. <laughs> it's so it got, it's stunned. It got to be stunned. Yeah. Look, yeah. I tell him, I say, bro, I'm you got to wear time. jewelry. Everywhere I FaceTime him in the morning, he got jewelry on. <laughs> and he already said, I that's get it from right. you. I say, I don't wear it no more. Like she said, mm -hmm. you go to jail, do time, you come home, change my life. I'm like, man, I spent 50000 on the watch, man. I ain't buying all them chains no more. Man, you killing it, though. But so, so. And that's a thing that I, so that's a real deal. Like when Birdman, when I seen it, they like, man, everybody, somebody was like, man, everybody be stunned in uptown. Man. That's how they mm -hmm. do it, man. You picture Juvenile at his height as a career, you go pull up in that Magnolia, Juven might not be in town, he gonna have a yellow cars parked all in the Magnolia by the project. He got a, that's hard. Look, he got a, a Corvette out there, a Benz, a Beamer, a Jaguar, a Bentley. He just <laughs> leave his cars in the project. That's what you call stunt. That's what you stunt. You just leave your, like every time somebody passes the Magnolia, you just see a million dollar in cars just mm -hmm. pop right there. Clean wow. That's crazy. He get, he get rock heads to go clean his car while he on the road. That is hard that, though. I'm, Kira said, oh, okay, I got one more. Then. Okay, damn. <laughs> I already went through this. It's in my mind. She's trying to do it on, on, on my notes. Yeah. yeah. Tell oh, that's me, a good one. Could they call him the spokesman of New Orleans? For sure. Some people say he is, some people say he isn't. For sure he's the spokesman of New Orleans. For Why sure. is he so? Because he ain't he 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 report everything in New Orleans. Like he he go to bat for us. If he sees somebody stealing our culture, he put it on blast. You feel me? Like the situation with Jubilee, the situation even with Mobo Joe. Cause I seen Mobo Joe. You heard me? <laughs> Shout out to yeah. Mobo Joe. Yeah. You, heard me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he put light on that situation right. too, and that's how I found out through the situation through GDP. But GDP, okay. he plug a lot of situations up in New Orleans, and mm -hmm. he do it without want anything just out of the love that he got mm. for the culture. And he's educated on the culture. It ain't like he just speaking ignorant about the culture. He gonna put the facts behind Exactly. Him. Hey, so what you think? Don't go over there quiet on me. What you think? You got an opinion? You been seeing this blogging and him talking about different things. Do you agree? I ain't been saying, I ain't gonna lie. You don't be watching. Nah, <laughs> I, don't I, don't mean. Mean. I don't be watching. That don't keep a street. You, you what do you think about the bloggers and the, all of the stuff that's going on on the internet like it does? Do you even think about it? Well, I look at it, you know what I'm saying? But I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. You I don't be tapped lie. in? Yeah, I don't. But you, why? Though? Why do you think? Because you, you be like, Don Chief told me, I live in the real world. Like, Damn, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm about yeah, to, man, I be, I, be, I be zoned in what I'm doing, what I got, what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Because you could get stuck into looking at all that. Shit. Everybody's stuff, everybody's movement. Yeah, you but know it helps saying? educate too yeah, on, yeah, on the yeah. move. Like people gonna be doing it to you. Uh -huh. Like the more you work, people gonna try to paint a picture of who you are and what you've done, your legacy, right. the things that you've accomplished. And I think that's needed for our people to see. That's where you become an OG for me because you're now leading the way where you can show how people like yourself, man, people like Vaughn, you know, right, y'all right, made right. moves and people can right. see it and learn from it. I think that's hard, bro. Oh, yeah, that's, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, that picture gotta be painted. Real talk, oh, yeah. like I got a banquet I give in a project every year for the kids, like for the basketball and the football team. And I live in Atlanta now. So one year I just popped up and just came there. And to see that we got a prospect from our park that's number one, that's about to go. And when I walked, just to see the inspiration that I put into wow. him, I he like, Va, va, I'm telling you, woo, 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 I'm gonna put on for the hood like you did. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, that's what we supposed to do. Like, cause I'm the same one that influenced all my little cousins to be what I was. And they see me ride around with the guns and the jewelry and the mm -hmm. cars and the females and they wanted that. And I didn't take time out to tell them what comes with that. Cause they just see a picture of Facts. what you are doing, but they don't know cause you don't have that conversation. Cause you running. Man, that's you, real You chasing money at 365, you feel me? So, 
If somebody would have called home from jail, all my old cousins would be like, yo, I see you out there getting that money, but look, this could do the RICO. Man, we, I ain't never know what the RICO would be. You feel right. what I'm saying? So when I'm indicted on the RICO, it's like, what is this? I don't know. I ain't doing nothing for the no enterprise, so I don't right, know. Right. I want to go back to the film a little bit because um, I know you were in that movie before and then now you're writing. What inspired you to start writing and want to do your own thing? Seeing them still in our culture. Coming to New Orleans, taking our culture, and I'm one of the few ones that could put the whole culture together. Like, I could make a phone call. If the check big enough, I could call Birdman and, and make a play. If it's big enough, I could call Master P and make a play. I probably could call both of them and make the same mm -hmm. play. But how me? hard is it to do so, to, to start that film? I know you're putting up everything on this film, but to sit down and write it, to get it edited, to get the, you know, you know people, but how hard is, is it to do so? Writing, it wasn't hard because I write hard. music. And then I just called him like out of the blue. Like, yo, what's up? Mm -hmm. Like, what's up? Like, you want to shoot a movie? So when you wrote the characters, you already had him in mind? No, I just called him like... I just knew, I don't know if I had him in mind, but I knew it was going to be somebody from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, what should I shoot a movie? He ain't saying nothing, like, let's go. Come on. Is everybody in the movie from New Orleans? Yeah. No, I shot some in San Francisco, oh, yeah. too. Oh, okay. So I got, like, some scenes in San Francisco. Okay. So I went got Why some San big Francisco? dogs in San Francisco, because that's my second home. Okay. What? Yeah, that's my second home, Bay Area. You love the Bay Area? I love the Bay Area. We've never been, I've been to San Diego, but... I was thinking about San Francisco, but I'm like, they ain't got nothing out there. Yeah, they got You nothing. crazy. They like got, what? And you not like go San to, Diego, though. You got to go to no, Oakland. No, no. It's hella culture in Oakland. It's shout culture. out to E-40. Shout out to Be Legit. Shout out to Shout Kazon. out to Sugar T. You heard me? You know what I'm saying? Shout it don't out to play. Big Fine. Big, already there. <laughs> but I want to go I want to go back into Louisiana. B.T.Y. Young, and man, like, uh, just, uh, you hear so much about him, you know, far as, he, you know, Man, it, that was a great guy, you know, a, a lyricist, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, like, like, let's just tell me a little bit about him, how he even came about. Just give me his history, his rundown. Oh, Youngin, shit. for me, Youngin, um, I'm one of the, the same homies, question. yeah, one of the homies took Youngin to, I had a studio in my house where me, Mr. Marcelo, and Currency used to record that. So one of my little homies, he brought Youngin through the house, and Youngin spit a verse. It was a beat I was working on. He was like, let me see that. And he one taped it, and I was like, that's your beat. You know what I mean? He had to be like 15, 14 or something. Like, he was young, young, and he was Get like, mm -hmm. he was Soda Slim reincarnated. Nice. Like, when I heard him, he was like Soda Slim reincarnated. Everything was just real authentic, raw. Nice. Yeah. You feel me? Damn. And how long did, and like, when you work with him that time, but do you keep working with him, or does he move on away from that situation? Yeah, so at that point, I was just, I was in my rapping days, like when I started. So we like we separated, but then Youngin went to jail and everything, and he had like a little smoke with my project. Okay. So once he came home from jail, like I pulled him, you know, to the side and everything, and I went hollered at my project just to see what the situation was. And my artist, rest in peace, Tokyo, he was like, "It's good, you heard me." So I put him and Tokyo on the song just so the hood can know. What was the name of that song? Uh, UPT. And that hoe went hard. Yes, indeed. Hmm. And so both of those guys passed away. Yeah. But both of those guys was detrimental to, you know, the youth. They were young. How old was they when they passed away? Shit. Both of them had to be, what, 20-something. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was young. Yeah, they was 20-something. I can't even tell you the age. But BTY BT Young, and I, I hear rumors that he was going to sign the cash money and all kind of stuff. Yeah, right? so yeah. after, I, you know, I got put Young and under my wing, I had to go do some time. So I got a brother that got a record label in Baton Rouge, and he had interest in Youngin and everything too. So Youngin was signing my brother. Well, he wasn't even signing my brother. They was just running the gutter. And my brother was doing a situation with Cash Money, so he swung Youngin over there with Cash Money. Wow. So did he? He didn't actually sign the deal. Nah, he was in the process. But he was in the process. The deal, but he come home. You know what I'm saying? To get his business clear at home because he about to go back to Miami. He was yeah, playing in he Miami. Go to, yeah, he could have go to Miami. Yeah, and right. they was about to sign a labor deal with Black Balloon and Baton Rouge and they was going up there and do the um, BBG cash money. Deal. What do you think What do you think cash money could have done with a BTY young? Oh, man, it was going to be yeah. on fire. How big could it have been? What, what What sound would you think would have came from something? That like? New Orleans sound. That whole it New was Orleans. coming back. Mm -hmm. It was coming back. Like, 
for sure. Bird's still where he at, and you know, shout out to Bird. Like, Man, that's cash my guy. money ain't never falling off. I'm never. talking about they ain't they never. They reinvented themselves so many times, mm-hmm. it's so ridiculous. Times. Nobody Facts. has done that, bro. But right, see, right, that right. youngin' was gonna be that BG, that UNLV core. He was gonna be what that cash money was built on, that uptown street shit. You feel yeah. me? Wow. So, how was it when you heard it? Where were you at when you heard the BTY youngin had passed? Man, where was I? I don't think I was in town when Youngin got killed. But somebody called you. And yeah, like, I, I got, I got I the call. Cali. You was in Cali too. So, yeah. and I'm gonna ask you about BTY Youngin as well. Like, right, right. how did he? How how did you see him as an artist and just nah, being he, from he, New Orleans? Yeah, beast. What I've been on him. You know what I'm saying? I met him around time when he uh, when he got out of jail. So okay. uh, I was signed to a label uh, from downtown actually, and uh, I was at the studio, and my people brought him over, and we was young, and then how old was y'all? Shit. Yeah, I say like twenty. I was shit. I was like twenty one. Yeah, like y'all young. Ooh, y'all were going. Ooh, y'all were going to yeah, tear something yeah. up. So we. I want to see so, y'all. So when I heard, yeah. I'm like, oh, home, a beast, and we clicked. Like we had a lot of shit in common. So we just clicked. But as an artist, like he had the city. Like everybody loved him. Like he he was a dog with that rapping. You know what I'm saying? And, and everything he talking about. Like he was the he was the new slim. Like yeah. everybody was on him. Like he was on his way. Like I was up when I was up there with Pete. He had called me. Like man, tell Pete I won't fuck with him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He on it, whatever moving. Yeah, I'm like, with it. Man, tell Pete Cup, get me. Yeah, for sure. So he yeah. just, I'm, I'm so New Orleans. I'm so this what I'm doing. Dedicated law to the labels that came from here. I'm rocking with them no matter what. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I get young in that formula though. Like that was a talk. I was like, young gang, if it ain't no beef, go smoke him on a song. If it ain't no blood been shared. Go smoke him on a song, and Youngin hit everything in the city. He went jumped on everybody's song in the city, and he laid it down. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, if you had a buzz in the city, he was giving you a verse, and he was coming uh, on wow. your shit. So yeah. yeah, I think that's hard, man. I love I, the story, bro. Like, like I said, I hear so much about him, and I just, I, I, you know, how he died at such a young age, mm-hmm. and, and and but he had so much of a. Uh, of, of of impact and influence when it come down to his movement and the people that he affected. Right. He affected a lot of people in a short amount of time, bro. Right. Right. And that's the, you know it's something real when it when right. you see it like that. Facts. So tell me, um, what would it take to make New Orleans great again? Oh, we great, baby. We great. Ooh. We ain't losing Ooh. that touch. We New Orleans. We ain't losing that when you touch. Make baby. He, she got that from Trump, y'all. <laughs> make America no. great again. I know where that came from. No. I heard it. Did y'all heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> no, because when people when I hear stories about New Orleans and how New Orleans used to be and stuff like that, compared to they said, you know, after Katrina, it has a lot more, you know, building up and stuff to to do. Right. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, when will New Orleans be like yeah, what it used never to be. be? It'll never be what it used to be. You don't think be. so? No, nah, it'll nah. never be. It's like we'll never go back to before COVID. Like, it, it seems normal, but shit, COVID shit. It took two years out of our life. It man. took a lot. You ain't mm-hmm. been like, saying since mm-hmm. Katrina happened. Yeah, that was that's what she was saying. Like, for sure. It ain't, it ain't shaking back after, after Katrina. Katrina it that's spread at the city. World. So that culture went all over all the over. world, mm-hmm. but in the city also. So. You know, you took everybody from uptown and then you spread them all out. Yeah. So every, ain't nobody got their blocks. Like in our area, you know, you got your park, you got your stove, you got everything in your neighborhood where you don't have to leave out your neighborhood. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So That's now they just put people in so many other neighborhoods and that just left the murder rate up higher. Wow. Mm-hmm. Man. Uh, but that's crazy you, because. Go ahead. No, because when you think about, you know, you said they got spread out, but when we go to New Orleans, you see, we just hear all of the accents, uh, everybody is still there. Right. But y'all know it different, as in, like you said, the projects, you know, everybody normally be over here, this people be over here and stuff like that. But visitors coming in, they still love the culture because they can still get that feel. Right, they seeing what they've been seeing. They ain't, they ain't been touched. Right. Like downtown, Bourbon, you, that's what you talk when they come mm-hmm. in the tours, they come in and see that. Mm-hmm. They ain't coming in the hood. They ain't coming, you know, they probably come in some places they known for food or something like, but they ain't just chilling, they don't see the real do y'all ever go to that what? bourbon street yeah i still be out there okay. you know i'll be i'll be a tourist in my own city Nah, that's I, his thing right there that's you know. <laughs> i want to ask you about uh is it black ink yeah i want to ask you about your your participation in that mm-hmm. like how was it how did you even get linked with that whole situation honestly the crazy part like um this one i come back from L- la Mm-hmm. I had my little brother. He come in town. He was in he was in Houston. So he come in town. Like I wasn't tattooing. I stopped tattooing because I was up there with Pete. I was up there for like five years, and uh, I come back. 
and I'm doing other stuff. So I, I got my other stuff going on. So my little brother came in town. I'm like, look, you have my shop. Like, go tattoo. And uh, he started hashtagging. You know, hashtagging black black tattoo, New Orleans tattoo, whatever. And somebody from casting called him. Right? So they hit him up like, look, we coming in. We, we, we about to start the new Black Ink. We going to do the New Orleans. We looking for artists, uh, you know, such and such. We on from Black Ink. So he come to me. He said, look, bro, this Black Ink on the phone. I think you should talk to him. I told him I ain't read it, but I want to introduce him to you. So I get on the phone with him, and uh, I'm telling him who I was, and they like, wait, you such and such, this you, you was with P? Oh, we've been looking for you. We've been hearing about you because we've been asking all the people who like urban tattoo artists from New Orleans, so everybody kept telling them about me. So they're like, yeah, um, you know, we want to link up with you. So I talked to him for like, like two months before filming and all that, before anything was going on. And uh, we were just keeping in contact telling me about the show and all that, and I'm just telling them what I'm trying to accomplish and, you know what I'm saying, on the show, for the show, for me to agree to do it. And, uh, you know, I did the show. It was cool. It was certain things I ain't really care for. And, uh, you know, I had I, I made them give me a walkaway contract. Walkaway contract? Explain. So I didn't have no ties. Like, they, 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 they want to lock you in for at least 10 years for the show. And... I, I come from contracts. I come from doing movies. I was signed. I was so I'm like nah, I'm good on that. Like I'm reading my contract and I'm not. I'm not with this. Ten years. Ten years. Damn. They want to. Then they want to. Everything you put out, they wanted something from it. So it's like it was complicated. It's like, bro, look, y'all ain't making it. I already got stuff going on. I already got. I'm doing shit already. So y'all not about to take no money from that. So we really got to sit down and break this contract down. So they try to give me the contract the day before. Because when I go and play, they think I'm younger than what I am, and I'm quiet. Because I, I, I observe what's going on to see if you're trying to play me. And, you know, that was one of the moves. So I called them, like, look, I'm good. So I turned them down, like, five times. And then they finally, they had Caesar hit me up. I met with him. He like, look, dog, like, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, director on here. And, like, whatever you want, like, I got you. Like, ain't, we ain't gonna make sure nothing crazy go on. I'm like, I right, bet, but I want to walk away contract until I see a few episodes and see how this go, and then I revisit that. But you know, it was a lot of just stuff going on, and it, the show didn't really last. So I was able to walk away. Big red. Wow. Rocks. Walk away without no attachments. No attachments. Yeah. Do we had somebody smart. else that's who smart. was on Black King that we interviewed? No, too. that was that, that girl. I told him about that girl. Mm -hmm. I can't remember her name, but man, she would. It wasn't on Black King. She was dealing with white folks. Mm. Yeah, she was not like, dealing yeah. with you. Know what I'm saying, yeah, it was, it was white. Ten years, <laughs> <laughs> ten years a long country. Big no, red, that's big red records, man. That's raping you records. Oh man, man I gotta ask you about uh, Mac, man. We gotta talk about Mac. I can't come over here and not talk about Mac. Yeah, that's the homie, man. Like, like Mac is a. Uh, we interviewed Mac, and Mac was so humble and just a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and you know the one thing I can say about him is. He talked about, you know, just, you know, coming up so early, you know, with Gregory D and all those different with Manny Fresh mm -hmm. and then right. ending up, you know what I mean, having to just boom, get taken away like that. But I mean, but to be a guy who everybody say didn't do it. Right. And then to go through what he went through and still be as stern and, and as player and as, hu you know, humble as he is. Right. Facts. I think that's live, man. Because oh, yeah, yeah, I really right. think, you know, me, I'm a different different level. I think, you know, the true gangster is taking care of your family and kids. I'm being right, real. right, right. And all that other stuff, something different. For Facts. It. But to see him reunite with his family right. and come back. He went through a lot, man. For I real. all his knives, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, for real. Like, Mac, Mac is the first. And I tell Mac this every time from a young Nigga that was in them streets and I heard Cash Money and No Limit and they had me on, out my mind on some gangster shit, but Mac gave you a conscience. You feel wow. me? Yeah. yeah. He taught you through his music, you feel me? And Mac Mac said that. Mac said he like he a lyricist. He like like lyrics, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, that's a and fact. And I think that's something that details who he is and gives him a standoffish way of being not like everybody else. Right, right, For real. Right. That's why I was honored to get his twenty five Shell twenty fifth year anniversary for Shell Shock. Like we got that coming up on a July twenty first, but that's hard. I, I'm honored to do that for the homie. Like that's I'm hard. like, bro, let me let, let me get you a twenty fifth anniversary. That's, I, he was I like, let's it. do it. You feel me? He ain't even, like you said. He he like him too. 
They don't be they don't ask no questions, you hear me? I'd be glad they don't hit me with the contract. <laughs> I would get mad and start him with the contract. They'd be like, let's do it. I'd be like, like hey, bro, it's all love. You call me. I just was about to start a, a movie. I said, look, my birthday and everything. I said, fuck it, I ain't going nowhere. Come on. Let's that's do it. That's hard, man. That's let's just a, but that's, that's loyalty. That's oh, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different, man. Yeah. Man, so I mean, you really like when you think about just what what New Orleans represents to the culture, man. I gotta say thank y'all, man. I always mm -hmm. interview a lot of New Orleans people, man. man thank you. I rock yeah, with y'all, man. Ever since I did this podcast, I, I already I'm from right by New Orleans. I'm not New Orleans, but Louisiana. I know y'all think it's different. <laughs> uh, on you niggas, man. It's I his can, own place. It has parishes and all. It's his it own is. spot. Yeah, it's yeah. Different. It, it's different. How, what do you think about KLC? When I got to throw his name up. Oh, the drum me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about KLC, man? When it comes down to, man. to the sound and the way yeah, he, he got that voice. original New Orleans yeah. sound. He one of the pioneers of that sound. You feel yeah, me? yeah. He one of the pioneers of that sound. Thanks, thanks. So Manny Fresh, Manny Fresh came with that bounce, man. Yeah, when, he is listen, the pioneer man. of the sound. <laughs> listen, man. <laughs> he is the sound. Oh, that nigga, that, that nigga stupid. You can't put that yeah, nigga behind no beat. You watch that Netflix <laughs> special on Manny Fresh? <laughs> yeah, you know what? That educated me so much, man. Yeah, you should go see it. To show you how bounce music started, huh. Fresh. Oh, I didn't crazy. know Fresh started it. I that's knew crazy. he was a part yeah, of the beginning. Right. I didn't know he started it. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. And that's a bad man to take that, and, and that's our sound. Man. What did you, when you first discovered his music and his beats, what did where were you at and what did you think about the movement and what was the biggest impact of his music? Man, that, that New Orleans music was, you didn't listen to nothing else. Like, you listen to N.W.A., New Orleans music, because our music scene was on smash. Like, the world knew the hot boys, but see, UNLV with Man and Fresh? Man, that was something different. Mm. That's where BG coming in the game, enters as a, he's a he's a kid coming under UNLV. You feel me? Like, man. That was hard. Man, that was the landscape of New mm. Orleans. And you talking about from that third world? You would have thought Man and Fresh was from the third world. BG. How you a cat from downtown around all them uptown niggas and you give them the sound that is uptown, but he from downtown. Mm. Man, I remember all them songs Lil Wayne did, man. That shit was crazy, man. For real. That boy was handling it, man. He was handling them, man. That ain't nothing like that, bro. One mm. person, all them albums. Ain't nothing like every that, Every album bro. sounded different. Like, Juvie album didn't sound like a BG album. Didn't sound like a Lil Wayne album. Right. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So he really did. His thug this one. That, that cash wanted to run. crazy. I had a question. So, um, how important is Peach's records to the culture? That's a staple. Oh, that, yeah. To hear every rapper yeah. say they got a... They start at Peaches. Like, Mia was working at Peaches. Mm -hmm. Mac coming from Peaches. Like BG was there. BG, like, everybody That's come crazy. from that. Like, that was a staple mm -hmm. in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And it's still there now. Still there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Man, Shout I out Mr. Ryan. Ryan. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan, we interviewed her. Hold here. No, I ain't seen it. We interviewed her. Go check it out. We were in her shop. I ain't well, playing no game. <laughs> you <laughs> cutting up, huh? <laughs> you cutting up, you heard me? We got to give you the key to the city, you heard me? Yeah, you know. I just show love, man, because I love, I love the whole culture, and I just don't think people give us our just do. We got to take it by force. Right. That's the fact. We got to make people understand that the South ain't playing no games. Oh, no. Nah, and, and we already done it through the music. Now we got to do it through the sources of media to make media. them understand mm -hmm. we going to make y'all see what we doing. And you're doing a great job man. with that. Like, I'm from trying the guesses my damn that you artist. break, right. you <laughs> feel me? You're doing a great job yeah. you're giving that perspective of what it is, that, what this culture mean. And like you say, you and Gita, y'all be speaking facts. Y'all don't just speak feelings. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of feelings ain't logic. Like, you feeling that way, but that ain't logic. Nah, right, right. Like, Lewayne ain't the best. Fuck y'all gonna say Lewayne ain't <laughs> the best when every rapper out here is a Lil Wayne. Just like you. Like, they got to stop playing with us. Like, we ain't set the tone. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just saw the homie Parley saying the franchise boys started white tees. Like, what? Are you serious? Come on, man. We've been tees, bowls, and reeds since it started. <laughs> For real, y'all boys, them Jabos, y'all. I'm just about to I ask about them Jabos. I made so much money messing with y'all and them Jabos, man. So what you think about? Who you think started the white t-shirts, boy? Uh -huh. Who you think what started the white t-shirts? But uh, anything we forget, guys, we got to make sure we get everything. Oh anything, man, anything. you got we sacrifices down, coming. Yeah, yeah he got, mentioned we got that. Sure, second season sacrifice coming. Oh, you know what I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he really mentioned coming. that. Yeah, he mentioned that BT. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got yeah. the all in clothing all line in coming, out. coming out. Okay, okay. You didn't well, say we that. got some new design. We got some new stuff. Where I got can they find the clothing line? Uh, you could go on uh, 
Allin.com. Right? Allin.com. <laughs> is it all in oh, no, it's all in.com? No, it's all in by ace Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wow. That's dope. Now, how can people get a hold of you guys? They trying to link up with you, man. Uh, Vaughn, you first. I'm Hoodstar underscore Vaughn. No, I think I'm back Cali or Vaughn. I'm back hey! I'm back, Cali I'm back Cali or Vaughn. Cali Cali on Instagram or everything. They mm. brought me back out, man. I, I took like a year off of social media. I ain't want to deal with nothing. I'm glad I seen that out. movie. You glad he back out? I'm glad oh, he back man. out. I had to come outside. Man. He get me outside. Ace, what, what's up with you? How can people get a hold of you online? You uh, Ace B47, A-C-E-B-47 on all platforms. That's big. That's I big. Have, yeah. The biggest thing that I, I keep hearing about Calio, right? Not hearing about Calio, but when I look up Calio, I'm trying to spell Calio, C-A-L-L-I-O, but that's not really how it's spelled. No. Nah. Yeah. Why? Where did that name or, yeah, originate yeah, it's like from? It's like Calliope, but it's yeah. Cali. I don't yeah. know. You know New Orleans. We take any word. It's, really, it's, you know. it's really the uh, the Calliope. B.W. Cooper. Yeah, the B.W. Cooper. <laughs> how is it developed? Uh -huh. I don't even know where the Cali come from. Yeah, I don't know where they come from. It, yeah. <laughs> like, like, is it French? Is it this? It is, is it French. It's a flower. It's a flower. That's Calliope what it is. is a flower. Like all the magnolia. It's right. It's a flower. Oh, that's a Okay. But but they don't call it Calliope. No, it's Calliope. Calliope. We ain't hear that. I ain't hear Calliope in the right pronunciation to a GPS to me. It was like, turn on Calliope Street. I'm like, what the fuck Street? I'm like, Calliope? I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I got to no. ask one more question. I can't let y'all get out of here without asking about I asked y'all this, and you can answer. You can just say I pass on that question. Is C. Murder in innocent? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What make you say that? I was there. You were there that night? I was okay. there. Being there, because we have all West people Bank. who say that it was West there, Bank. but they didn't see what happened, so they don't know. Yeah, he innocent, man. Free the home to see murder, man. They did him bad over there. See, that that you don't play on that, you that don't play parish. You don't Cross play the river. That. That's where I got indicted at. Yeah. In that parish, you don't play. You going to jail. So they were trying to make an example. They were just making an example they, of yeah, for sure. They mad at him, shit. For sure, for sure. They don't See, like innocent, man. That's period. We don't play with Jefferson Parish. To this New day. New Orleans small. To this day. Yeah, right. when you land in New Orleans, that's not New Orleans. That's Jefferson Parish. You got to get out of there. You West Bank, Fast. Jefferson Parish. We, we surrounded by Jefferson Parish, New Orleans. Look. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know that. They talk about how outside. corrupt it is. I yeah, never yeah. flew into New Orleans. Nah, nah well, it's, it's, to the you airport. fly up to the airport, but that's that's Jefferson Meta, yeah, that's Jefferson. That's Metairie, Louisiana. I drive. I've there. heard of Metairie. Yeah, yeah, that's where you come in at. Mm -hmm. But it's small. Like you get on the bridge and then you move yeah. on. Like with fifteen minutes, trying 15. to catch. I just want to ask y'all that question. I don't. I think I got everything, um, man. To be real with you guys, man. Uh, want to sit down with y'all again anytime. I got movies, projects. Anytime y'all got some y'all trying to push, man, call me up, man. Let's do it. Let's get it popping, man. We ain't got this platform for nothing. It's for our people to get the word out right. on new projects, stuff we doing. That's what it's all about. Love yeah. you guys, man. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you, man. Thank you guys you, so man. much. Thank, Thank you. you. If you guys we, ever we, need we me, nigga, I'll in, pull up. Pull we up. Like yeah. Come on. <laughs> pull up. You ever come around and get your car in one it of these It ain't that far. It ain't that far. I need you to be a podcast scene. Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, man. Stop playing. Dude, I could be a director. Look, we Come got on. the cameraman already been filming. Yeah. Check we it, might, man. We might need might you to sign that, that release. Up in there, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we might need that release. <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> hey, man. Listen, man. God, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel, man. Hey, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.